Hello, welcome back to this series of videos from my book, The Effect. Uh, so as we move uh, along, uh, we've been talking about causal diagrams. We've been talking about causal diagrams as a way of putting our idea about how the world works down on paper. And this is going to help us identify our effect of interest. Uh, and the way that it's going to do this is by letting us think about the causal paths uh, that things move along. Right? So when we have a causal diagram, what it's really doing for us is it's telling us the reasons why different variables are related to each other. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So let's take a look at this very basic diagram, very generic. So we have a treatment, we have an outcome, uh, we got some other stuff on there. So one thing you might ask yourself is, okay, if I'm interested in the causal effect of what the effect of the treatment on the outcome, right? That might be a typical question that we would ask of a causal diagram like this. Uh, and the quite thing you want to say is, okay, well, why are the treatment and the outcome related to each other? Well, one reason why they're related to each other is that we have an arrow from treatment to outcome, right? Simple as that. The treatment causes the outcome. But that's not the only reason why those two things are related. We know that that's not the only thing. We looked in the data, we looked at the correlation between treatment and outcome. Uh, that would not by itself tell us the causal effect of the treatment on the outcome because there's other reasons why those two variables might be related. That's all the stuff we've been talking about since we started talking about identification. But the diagram will tell us exactly why those two variables might be related to each other. So for example, uh, one reason why treatment and outcome are related to each other uh, is that uh, B, the variable B here, tends, uh, causes treatment. And uh, B also causes things that cause outcome. So B uh, causes treatment, it also causes C, which causes outcome. So one reason why we might observe treatment and outcome being related to each other is that B causes the treatment, and B also influences the outcome as well. That is a causal path that we can walk along uh, that explains why we see a relationship between treatment and outcome. And when we're identifying our causal effect, that's the thing that we want to focus on, right? We've got this arrow that we're trying to get at, uh, and we are going to see what else there is on the diagram so that we know what we're going to need to handle in our identification scheme. So what do I mean by path? What is a path on a diagram like this? Well, a path is any way that you can sort of walk along the diagram from one variable to another. Uh, and that's going to be a path. Uh, so, for example, the, the path that I mentioned here, we can go from treatment to B to C to outcome. That is a path that we can walk on this diagram uh, that gets us from treatment to outcome. And because we started at treatment and ended at outcome, uh, it is a reason why we might see those two variables be re being related to each other other than just treatment causing the outcome. Uh, now, something you might have noticed is that the arrow on this diagram goes from B to treatment, not the other way around. And yet, when I talked about the pathway, I said from treatment to B. That's okay. You can go back up an arrow when you are talking about a pathway. So taking a look at this basic example, let's talk about what pathways we see here from treatment to outcome that would explain why treatment and outcome might be related to each other. One is the arrow from treatment to outcome. That is the direct effect of treatment on outcome. Uh, we can also go from treatment to A to outcome. That's a pathway that we can walk. Uh, so this is saying basically that treatment causes outcome uh, because it influences A and influ A influences outcome as well. Uh, we can also go from treatment to B to C to outcome. That's another pathway that we can walk. Uh, that one is saying basically that, you know, because that B will drive a relationship between treatment and outcome. Uh, that's not all that we can do as well, right? We, there's a bunch of different pathways we can take. Uh, we can say treatment to A to B to C to outcome. That's another one that we can do. Uh, we can do treatment to B to A to outcome. It's another one. Uh, so basically any path that you can walk along, as long as you're not doubling back on yourself. Uh, so we wouldn't, for example, say treatment to B to A to treatment to B to C to outcome. That wouldn't be a path that we would do because it circles back on treatment, hits it twice. Um, uh, as long as we're not doing that, that is a pathway that might be interesting to us. As long as we can get from one variable to another, uh, that will explain why those two variables are related to each other, uh, whatever pathway we walk along. It. Let's take a quick example. Let's say that we're interested in the effect of drinking wine on your lifespan, how long you are going to live. So here's a very simple diagram that you could probably already imagine I'm leaving some stuff out, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, so we have a bunch of arrows here. Uh, we have some, uh, some factors uh, like income and health that affect both how much wine you drink and your lifespan, where health here is sort of your, your background level of health before you started drinking any wine. Uh, we also have uh, that wine affects drugs, which affects lifespan. Maybe wine is a substitute for taking other kinds of drugs, or maybe it is a complement for that. Maybe if you drink a lot of wine, maybe it makes you want to take certain other kinds of drugs, and those will affect your lifespan as well. We also have U1, uh, which is an unobserved thing that relates your income and your health, uh, but uh, we don't have it necessarily directly on the path there. 
So as I mentioned, each pathway that we can walk is an alternate reason why two variables might be related to each other. And you can usually tell a story about it uh, that will help make it a bit clearer. So for example here, if I wanna know why wine might affect your lifespan, one is the direct effect. Maybe wine directly affects your lifespan. That's the arrow from wine to lifespan. Every pathway that we can talk about here is a reason why we might observe these two variables being related to each other that's not causal. So, for example, I can go from wine to income to lifespan. That's saying that people who are richer might be able to afford and drink more wine, and they also will live longer lifespans for other reasons. Or wine to health to lifespan. People who are healthier uh, might feel like they have the ability to drink more wine. If you're really sick, maybe you need to stay away from alcohol. Uh, and then also being in better health will improve your lifespan. Those are different reasons why those two variables, wine and lifespan, are related to each other. We can even get more complex ones. So wine to income to U1 to health to lifespan. Uh, that one is saying that people who are wealthier are going to be able to drink more wine. Uh, that for some reason, wealth uh, income tends to be related to your background levels of health. And that health will affect your lifespan. Right? So people who are richer drink more wine. People who are richer tend to also be healthier, and that will make you live longer. That is a reason why wine and lifespan might be related to each other, other than just wine causing lifespan. So we've got all these pathways that we can walk, and there's a description in the chapter of how to find all the pathways. Um, and uh, we can also think about, well, what, do we, what can we do with these pathways now that we have them? Uh, we can categorize them into different kinds of things based on what our research question actually is. What is the thing that we want to answer? And the first thing that we can talk about is front and back doors. So a front door is any pathway where all the arrows point away from our treatment and towards our outcome. So for example, on this diagram, we have wine to lifespan. That is a front door path. Uh, we also have wine to drugs to lifespan, right? Wine might affect your lifespan because it makes you take more or fewer drugs. So that is a front door. We also have back doors. Back doors are any pathway where there's at least one arrow somewhere along the pathway that is pointing back at the treatment. Uh, and these are usually going to be alternate reasons why these two variables might be related to each other because there's something driving our treatment other than just some sort of random variation that's going to let us see the effect of our treatment. In addition to front and back door paths, we also have good and bad paths, and these are more tailored to our specific version of our research design. A good path is any path that you want to count in answering your research question. Now, often this will just be all the front door paths, but not necessarily always. Let's say that we're interested in the effect of wine and lifespan, not counting the fact that it might make you take more or fewer drugs, right? In that case, the only uh, good path that we'd want would be wine to lifespan. We would not want any of the other paths. Anymore. All the other paths that we don't think would count are bad paths. So if we want to say, hey, I want to know the effect of wine on your lifespan, I don't think the fact that wealthier, that people who earn more are going to drink more wine and, and live longer, I don't think that counts. I don't think that's a reason why wine causes lifespan, right? Because it doesn't count for our research question, that is a bad path. That's a path that we would want to get rid of. So by thinking about all the pathways from one variable to another, and there are a lot of them usually on a complex diagram like this, uh, we can categorize them into the pathways that we want to count for our research design. If we're interested in all the different reasons why wine causes lifespan, we might have two front door paths here, from wine to lifespan and from wine to drugs to lifespan. Hey, if wine makes you live longer because it makes you take fewer drugs, I think that counts as an effect of wine, right? I'm fine with that. Everything else is a backdoor path. Uh, and backdoor paths are what's go are going to be things that we're going to have to deal with in some way to identify our effect of interest. The, the task of identification is going to be the task of shutting down all the bad paths and leaving open all of the good paths. Once we've done that, we know that all the variation left in our data is only the variation that we're interested in and that we have identified our effect of interest. If we've gotten rid of all the variation that we don't want, if we've closed all the bad paths, which is usually closing all the backdoor paths, then we are left with only our effect of interest, which is a way of saying that we have identified just the causal effect that we are interested in. And in the next video, we'll talk a little bit about how to do that. Mm -hmm.